It was literally just a process error. Um, this, this was not against them in any particular way. Was anyone held accountable uh, in, in your censoring department uh, for that mistake? Well, we don't have a censoring department. There's a big difference uh, between uh, stopping bullying and, and violent type of social media posts versus actual censorship of political views that you disagree with. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey admitting that blocking a New York Post story on Hunter Biden was a total mistake, but could did not answer when Louisiana Congressman Steve Scalise asked him if anybody was held accountable for it. Congressman Scalise joins us now. Uh, uh, to the point that this is, like I think, the fourth or fifth hearing that you've had, I mean, where is the ball on the field now? Are we? Are, is it advancing in any way? Well, Dana, Bill, good morning. Good to be with you. Look, you saw bipartisan frustration and anger uh, with the tech CEOs and the, the way they're abusing their platforms, uh, the way they're hiding behind Section 230 uh, of the law that gives them immunity from prosecution, yet they're, they're not just acting like the town square. They're literally censoring uh, and picking uh, winners and losers in a forum where people thought they were going to be going just to exchange information with friends and to be able to put ideas out there. Now you see they selectively block certain people. When I asked Jack Dorsey on Twitter about the New York Post article, I'm glad he admitted uh, that that was, uh, shouldn't have happened. But I mean, you're talking about uh, a paper, a newspaper that was, it goes founded by Alexander Hamilton in 1801. They blocked their account for two weeks. They couldn't send out anything because Twitter was bullying them, trying to force them to take down an article that turned out to be true right before an election. I mean, that's the kind mm -hmm. of stuff, the Hunter Biden article, that's the kind of stuff that angers people is that they don't see this being played out equally. It seems like conservatives are being uh, targeted more by uh, some of these social media platforms. And Twitter's probably had the, the worst abuses on this. I mean, they just took uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene off of Twitter last week for uh, probably 12 hours. And then they said it was a mistake. Who's making these mistakes? And is it really a mistake? Why aren't people being held accountable. And I asked him that twice, and he refused to answer who's doing this and if they've even been held accountable. These aren't mistakes. Did it come up, and did they answer whether or not YouTube or Twitter or Facebook will allow Donald Trump back on their platforms? It came up, and specifically with Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg was asked if he's... Zuckerberg said that he has a board that he put together to determine uh, when people should be removed or put back on Facebook. And it was asked to him uh, if the recommendation, I think Billy Long from Missouri said, if the recommendation of your board is to put Donald Trump back on Facebook, will you, Mark Zuckerberg, block that? Mm. And Zuckerberg said, no, he would not block it, that they would actually put him back on. Uh, but again, when you look, I mean, even on Twitter, President Trump is banned on Twitter. Uh, how, how selective are they in determining who they ban from their platforms? It seems like it's conservatives that are being banned by and large. Uh, you know, the, the Ayatollah can put out uh, things talking about death to Israel and America. You, you look at the Chinese Communist Party, they're spreading disinformation right now on Twitter. In fact, the Washington Post article uh, that attacked President Trump and, and totally mischaracterized the phone call uh, with Georgia election officials that Washington Post themselves have admitted was, was wrong. They admitted that there was a false story, and yet you could still tweet that false narrative out on Twitter. Uh, but President Trump yeah. can't refute it because he's banned. I mean, th this is the, the double standard he that people had, are very um, angry about, and it's got to get confronted. You even had Senator Bernie Sanders this week saying he's not comfortable with the policy overall. So we'll see where it goes. Thank you, Congressman, for joining us today. Thank you, sir.